Welcome back, everyone. Going into hour number two here. Uh, Adam, what's going on? Uh, I'm going to need a medicine check from uh, our friend Janice here. Oh. Uh, so, so Janice, your intent here is to uh, extract one of these things live from the from the body. Oh no, I, I'm not doing that. Well, you're the one with the knife. <laughs> that that was the plan. That so was I guess the plan the thing, to you, get it live. You're holding the knife, and then you look up like, "Who's doing this?" <laughs> no, I just got done role playing that I said Gideon should do it. Oh, I thought you meant just to hold the pot. Okay, so I guess no. I, I guess you start going <laughs> in, uh, and then you you put up the knife and hand it to me, and I'm just I gotta do everything around here, and grab the knife, and uh, I'll I'll try to go in and uh, uh, secure it alive. Don't, don't worry, I will give you the blessing of the sun, and I cast guidance on you. I kind of look back. Oh God. I look back <laughs> and say we're gonna need a bigger bag, most likely. <laughs> Uh, and I'm rolling with my normal character here on Cooper medicine, has right? Black eyes, like a doll's eyes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a As you go, check. I know I'm standing behind. You. I'm like, I'm right here, by the way. Okay. Give you support. <laughs> you put your hand on me, and I'm just like, thank you. You got this. Now, now, Janice, if you actually help, uh, if you you know you get down and like hold the body or like help him in some way, you you can give advantage to. to no. Him. No. All right. He's freaked out. He's freaked out. Uh, yeah, I, will, totally. I will help Gideon. I will help Gideon. Okay. So you you, you give him a, a blessing first, uh, and then um, and then yeah, go ahead and uh, make a medicine check. You've got advantage, and then you can roll an extra d4. All right. Here is the medicine check. Fourteen. Okay. D4. Seventeen. It's not okay. bad. All right. Yeah, so you're 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 okay. It's there's a moment of you know tension where you, you kneel down, and you've got your your knife, and like everybody's quiet and watching, and you know you poke into the things just above its sternum and, and cut it open, um, and it yeah it, it splits open over the bruise, um, and its its skin there is like s- sort of soft and and like decomposed a little bit, so you like cut it open, and uh, yeah immediately there's like a, a wriggling underneath as the the light hits whatever's kind of like nested under there. Uh, you can hear the, the kind of wet sound as it, it wriggles around. You can see it moving, um, and then it starts to emerge from the uh, from the hole. And what do you what do you do? Uh, put the pot on it. Fancy, put the pot down over it. <laughs> yeah, d- and, is it? Yeah, you, hear a, you hear a clunk as the thing like emerges from the from the, the wound and then clunks against the inside of the pot, uh, and it's it's buzzing around in there. You can hear it. Uh, it's like. Um, uh, yeah, it's like a, a metallic sound uh, clatting against the pot. And you can feel it like pushing against the... What are you going to make pot? me roll to turn the pot over and put the top on so it's stuck inside? Is that uh, acrobatics, um, dexterity? What are you thinking? Um, probably sleight of hand. What about animal handling? <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll allow it. Yeah. Animal handling. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Like an animal. All right. <laughs> I like that. Do I still have guidance for this roll? No. <laughs> Motherfucker. All yeah, right. There's no time to apply it again. All right. Here's the animal handling roll. Please go well. 20. Fucking yes. trip that shit. All right. Yeah, no problem. You just oh, scoop the lid on top. And uh, yeah, and the thing bangs around inside the pot um, a few times and then kind of like goes quiet. Uh, you can feel it like wriggling around in there a little bit, but it's not like banging itself against the, the lid or anything. Okay. Uh, I, I turned it. Got it. Here, I have some rope. Tie it, tie it really tight. Yeah, yeah. I start to wrap it around, tie it okay. off in the night. I, I put it on both sides of the pot, uh, assuming that the pot has like some sort of bulb on the top. Um, yeah, I imagine it has a uh, it has like a, a lid a with a little to it. Yeah. handle or something that you can hold on to, and yeah, so you just tie it up. Yep. Yeah, I yep. put it on both sides. And, all right. Well, I don't know how long this thing will live inside, but we've got it. Yeah, even if it dies, it'll give the alchemist something to look at. It's true. It's true. So we got a decision to make. Uh, Janice saw some smoke over yonder, but I don't think that's in the same path that we we're supposed to take to go back to the cave. Am I correct in, th- in that? Uh, yeah, it's not. It's not directly uh, there. So I say we stick to the mission. I say we stick to the mission too. Yeah. Everyone else agree? Berg, you want to weigh in? No smoke. Cave, yes. Okay. He it's a pass for him. Uh, oh, uh Adam, by the way, uh are normal zombies uh necromancy? Would they be emanating necromancy magic? Uh, normally, yes. Yeah. If they were if they were the kind of undead that maybe you have experience with, um yep. 
So these being enchantment or something, something different. Else, like, yeah, something else yeah. going on here. All right. I'll stew over that one. Ramus is very confused. He's like, hmm. All right. If you can uh, give me back that dagger, I guess we should just continue onward then. Oh, right. Yeah, I flipped the dagger. Uh, hilt okay. towards him and, and hand it to Janice. Sure. Did you clean it off first, or you just give? Yeah, it I wipe it on the bottom. No, I don't. I don't clean it off. There's bug. <laughs> there, there's just nastiness visceral all over it. Hand it to <laughs> yeah. him. You're like, oh, didn't see that there, and I just put my hair. <laughs> maybe like fix my hair with all the blood. You're like, I need a bath. <laughs> uh, and turn. Let's uh, let's get back to. I guess get back to the plan. We got to make sure that uh, we don't piss off the. The man. I guess okay. I start I kinda nod the forest. and resecure my uh, handkerchief and then lead the way. You know, thirty right. feet in front again. Do you want to take uh do you want to take a short rest before you go? Uh it's an hour, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. You guys tell me. That's up to you. I think everyone's full HP, right? Yeah, I don't think anyone's hurt. Full HP, the only thing uh Yeah, you're missing rage and, and shifting. Rage. Yeah. Yeah, we don't get that back from a short rest though, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think we do. I, I'll have to go get the book. Max, do you get uh, rage back from a short rest? Do you know? I, I would get my AOE back. Um, oh, we like, should have. Yeah, fuck yeah. it. That's yeah, worth yeah, an hour. Yeah, that. <laughs> just for that AOE, that's worth it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we we maybe move off this area a little bit and uh, take a short rest. Okay, sure. I, I'll go and find like some uh, a running spring or something like that, and try to clean off all the fucking blood. Yeah, you're pretty far from any of the, the sources of water that run through here, but you can find uh, like leaves that have collected uh, like dew and stuff in them and yeah, wash your face and your hands. Great. Yeah, that's what I do. I'm going to kind of climb that tree then add them to remain sentry. Okay. I mean, just hang out while everybody else rests. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. So nobody needs to spend uh, hit dice because they're all at full health. So uh, you'll just get uh, experience. Let me figure out what that is. And then, Make sure and factor in the one beetle we killed, by the way. Uh, oh. Yeah, they are not worth any experience. But Damn it, Adam. <laughs> I will put zero in here for you. Um, oh, no. rage a short or long rest for me. So, yeah, I'll get so, my... Eight hours is, is when I get my rage back. Yeah, you'll That's get a long rest. rest. You still got You still got uh, So everybody gets uh, 63 experience? Yeah. 63 XP. Um, 450, guys. Yeah, 450, and... guys. <laughs> Yeah, and so an hour an hour passes. Uh, we we move from uh, morning into uh, into afternoon, and um, what was the amount? Sorry, four four uh, seven. No 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 no. Oh no, the, the total is sixty three. Okay. Oh, sixty three. No, we're at four fifty exactly. Then yeah. Well, not all of you though. Oh, right. that's right, Burger. Oh, cold. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yep. Okay. Just right. those days, and I didn't have to calculate it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> So you, uh, yeah. So you all, uh, you all take a break, a, a brief break, and then, uh, yeah, and you can continue, uh, continue on. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going back to the uh, original cave where we started out. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, several several hours pass, and uh, you uh, you reach the uh, you reach the cave kind of mid afternoon. Um, it's obvious that this place has been visited since you were here. Uh, there's um, boot prints in the uh, in the dirt uh, around you. Um, the uh, the burial uh, like place that you uh, set up has been disturbed, uh, and the uh, the bodies have been uh, have been moved. Uh, you don't in fact see them uh, anywhere uh, around here. There are uh, wagon tracks. Uh, that lead further into the valley, like the in the direction you were headed. Okay. Huh. Think so so, so they found they found their way into the tomb where the bodies were, and yeah, them out. Yeah, yeah. The tomb is open, and and the place has been uh, looked through. I think maybe the four of us are just standing there, and you hear like some crickets chirping or something, and I just go, "Fuck." <laughs> and turn to turn to Janice. Is there any way to track this these this cart? Oh yeah, the tracking of the cart should be fairly easy, actually. Do we want to go inside there, see what's been done to the tomb? I mean, if that 
if that amulet or not amulet, but the bracer is not here or whatever, then I, I think we're just wasting time. Where did you leave his body? We had put him just inside the tomb. Mm -hmm. Did you hide it? Not really. We we had the entrance, but apparently it wasn't good enough. They found their way in. Look, uh, I'll I'll go inside just to to check around. I'll be right back. I try to act like courageous about it, but the second I get close, I'm like, this is a bad fucking idea. Yeah, hey, 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 no heroes. I'm not being a hero, I'm just being a scout. Be right back. Walk inside. Right. Just I, I literally uh, just poke my head in. It's yeah, it's dark. It's dark in the cave. So you don't see anything in the, the room, but that's also where you left the bodies. So uh is there were there any torch or sconces or anything on the side? No. Is there anything for me to light with Druidcraft? Uh, yeah. I mean, you could find like a dry, uh, dry branch or something. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. I, I just light something with Druidcraft cantrip sure. real quick. That's fine. Yeah. So you light it up and kind of wave it around. It's not gonna last, and there's lots of smoke coming off of it because the wood is still like green. But yeah, you you get a good look around in this room, and it, it looks like yeah, there's there's evidence that the the bodies that you hid here have been uh, dragged out. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. I come back. Nothing's in there. I took it all. I think we have to track that wagon. I throw the burnt piece of wood out or whatever I lit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I give a nod then and say, uh, let's just resume our travel then. I'll lead the way. Yeah. That also means they're going to be aware that they're dead and we may have more problems now. Well, it might not have been the Court of Wands, was it? I, too many courts. <laughs> coins, coins, coins is the court uh, of coins. Let's, yeah, the other side. let's hope they're just corpse collectors. Let's hope that that's all they are. Yeah, grave robbers. I, I hope that's <clears throat> that's got to be what it is. It couldn't be anything else, right, Ramus? <laughs> After what I just saw back there, I'm expecting anything. Janice, I believe it's on you now. Lead us. I nod, scurry off into the bush. Okay. So you want to try to to track the uh, um, the the wagon? Uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, go ahead and make a um, uh, make a survival check for me. Oops. Seventeen. Seventeen. Not bad. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, so I can tell you this about the tracks and they're fairly easy to, to follow. Um, they, uh, there's a, a cart they're following. It looks like the, there's, there's actually two sets of wagon tracks, uh, one light set and one heavier set. Uh, the heavy set is going from where you are out into the forest. The light set is from the forest in, and it looks like they just followed their own tracks back the way they came. So you can see four, four lines that kind of over, uh, overrun each other. Same number of footprints here and there, right? You can tell the way they're facing. Um, and then Can I tell about how many footprints, uh, yeah, with the 17. Sure. Uh, you figure there's about uh, a half dozen. Um, okay. one person is wearing like sandals, uh, like just kind of flat, uh, flat footprints. That person looks like they're pulling the cart. Um, okay. and then the other five are boots. Uh, okay. like, uh, yeah, like proper kind of leather. You know, it's like a wheelbarrow cart or is it like a proper like wagon? Yeah, wheelbarrow, exactly. Like two, two, uh, two wheels. Uh, yeah, it came in light and went out heavy. Uh, and um, it looks like they, they. It's not like they're trying to like hide their hide their tracks, right? Somebody they, they've been like chopping away. You can see branches that are broken as they intersect the path. Uh, there's bits of uh, of debris on the ground. Um, at one point, you find a um, the like stub of a, a little hand rolled like tobacco cigarette, just kind of like butted out uh, on a tree. Um, they didn't, uh, yeah, they didn't make any effort to, to hide their, uh, hide their tracks. Okay. Then I, and I just uh, track it down, follow it. Hey, keep following it. Okay. Um, so you follow it until, uh, until it starts to get dark. So as you, uh, as you, you continue through the, through the forest, uh, the, uh, the sun dips below the, the edge of the valley. And because Shulin is a, is quite a deep valley, uh, they, the sunset happens earlier than it would like out on the plains you don't get the full sunset um so it, it gets dark um and uh and starts to get cold it's already damp um do you uh do you want to continue or do you want to uh, rest for the night 
I think I, I wait for the group to catch up. Like I find a suitable stopping point and just explain to them that tracking it at night is probably not the best choice. Yeah, I mean, you can. It's, it's a nice obvious trail, but you will need uh, to light a torch and uh, that sort of thing. Yeah. Do, so uh, I just recommend we rest. Do they look fresh or are we close? Do, do you have any idea if you can tell that, Janice? I'm not a tracking man, so I'm just... Adam? Based on the weather you've had recently, yeah, you, you'd guess that they're they're within the last day. I'm not a super expert at tracking, but it sounds like we're a little bit less than a day behind them. Okay, well, one would think that they're going to rest too. So, leaves us two options. We can either continue tracking, try to get a surprise on them, or take a rest like they're doing. Get up early in the morning, see if we can get some time on them then. I recommend the former. The... Uh the whole thing of like tracking it at night would we'd need a light source and that would be uh if they would see it coming it's it'd be very hard to pull off berg ramus you got it you want to weigh in uh, i don't care either way i don't think we're gonna catch them tonight anyways they're probably too far ahead it is just six i could from what i can tell it's six men one of which is pulling the cart which could be a slave or indentured servant of some kind it's true. Pretty easy for us to take unless they are extremely well equipped. But to come out and grab bodies from a tomb like this, I don't know why we would be facing anything too difficult. Berg? Agreed. All right. Berg agrees to something. He's not sure what, but he agrees. Uh, let's go ahead and just camp for the night. We'll get an early start tomorrow morning. Okay. Sounds good to me. Uh, and I think we start making camp. Probably not too close to the cave mouth, though. We want to be... Well, I guess we've tracked it for a little bit, you right? you tracked so, it yeah. for a few hours, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So do you uh, just, like, find a clear spot and, and sit down? Does everybody have, like, bedrolls? Do you have a tent? Uh, you all have food, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if we start a tent or anything. People can use their bedrolls if they'd like, but I, I probably just sleep on the ground. That's where I feel comfortable. Okay. Um, and then we, we do our normal shift of, of uh, scouting and stuff like that, or, or not scouting, but staying up to make sure we're not ambushed. Okay. Well, everybody mark off then um, uh, one one ration from your inventory because you got to eat. So. All right. Um, not even on my inventory? Rations. It's probably in your explorer's pack if you have one. Yeah, you start off with 10 rations. Mm-hmm. Oh, it wouldn't worry too much about gas. You'll probably die before. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <clears throat> I guess I couldn't cook anything in the iron pot because that's where the fuck <laughs> It's got a beetle in it. Maybe like right before I sleep, I, I hold the pot out and just make sure that there's something moving inside. <laughs> Rattle it around a little? Yeah, yeah. 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 There's the buzz of wings. Make sure that the pot's <laughs> secured. I don't want to wake up with one of us all of a sudden a beetle in their neck. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I sleep next to that, maybe. Like for, for farther enough or far enough away where I'm not going to bump it, but that's okay. definitely out in the open for really people to watch. I really don't to mark rations off. Either I'm dumb or... I mean, I mean you can just uh, put in your notes. So you don't have to mark it off anywhere officially. Yeah. Go. Let me look at your inventory. Um, Berg, yeah. you've got uh, an explorer's pack, um, yep. which contains... Yep. I think they have 10. Uh... Yeah, ten days of rations. So um, right. you now have you now have nine. And just yeah, make a note. Like you couldn't. The explorer's pack is all one item on your inventory. Yeah, I'll so just put that's in why. Like, it's I don't know, personality trait or something. Just like, yeah, just anywhere in your on your sheet that, that'll help you remember. Okay, so everybody, yeah, you sit down and you you have a meal. <laughs> um, sitting around the. Do you light a fire? It's kind of damp and like going to be cold at night. Yeah, yeah, we light a fire. Okay, yeah. we'll probably snuff it out when we all go to. To sleep, but yeah, we, we definitely light a fire. Okay, sure. All right. So you, uh, yeah, so you rest, and um, uh, and the, the night passes uh, uneventfully. Um, and I think, let's roll. I want to see who, at what point in the night this happens. Uh, okay, let's see. Three... Gideon. Berg becomes a woman. Janus, it's your, uh, it's on your watch. Nice. Um, you notice as you're as you're sitting, uh, you know, in the in the dark, 
uh, waiting for waiting for the night to pass. Um, what do you what are you doing? Like, what do you do to like pass time while you're sitting there? Like, because it's you know several hours of not being able to make any noise really because you don't want to wake anybody up. Um, you can't. There's no fire, so you can't like read or anything. What do you what do you do to pass time when you're on watch? Janice is a he's a solitary kind of guy. He, he enjoys it. He that's why he's one of the first ones to volunteer to do a watch actually. So he likes to. He fancies himself basically invisible, and he finds a spot that can kind of help him accomplish that. And then he's one of those like really fucking like if this was The Walking Dead, he's the mega tryhard. It's just like super survival. Takes pride in the fact that nobody can see him. And is going to do a great job of it. Right. He's just, he's just focused on the task at hand. Cool. So just in in game mode. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. So you notice uh, the uh, so we, we see you uh, kind of like crouch down, focused on your your keeping an eye on things, um, and we see above you the the sky, and I think that the the kind of prevalent cloud cover that we normally have in the Shulin Valley breaks a little bit, and we can see the stars uh, above, and the stars are arranged in constellations like the the stars that we uh, we have here on Earth, but um, you know they they represent the different arcana uh, and everything. And uh, there's just for a, a brief few moments, there's um, uh, like a shower of, uh, of meteors or, or comets. You can see some bright streaks uh, in the sky. And I notice this? Yeah, yeah. You, you look up because you see like the sky lighten slightly. Um, and we're not talking about like, you know, comets like coming to Earth and like meteors landing and stuff. But there's, there is, yeah, like a, a sudden uh, prevalence of, uh, of, of falling stars. And... Does that uh, is there is there any superstition like among the the people that you're you're from about uh, like meteor showers or falling stars? Like, do you make a wish or are you not superstitious in that way? Uh, well, I'm void born and I had a pretty good upbringing where like my family, I wasn't like uh, I didn't have a bad upbringing. Let's just put it that way, I guess. But mm-hmm. of course, I was one of the only void born in the in the town or village. Um, so I, I recognize that to other people, it means something, but to me, it doesn't really mean anything. I, I'm not, I don't have any attachments to it. Mm, okay. So it, it occurs to you, maybe you remember someone else, like maybe some, some kids in your, in your village, like waking up in the middle of the night to go and watch a, a, a meteor shower and you just not being interested. If anything, I think it symbolizes my detachment from the rest of the people. Like it, it is such a momentous, cool thing for everyone else. But for me, it means nothing that it kind of rubs in his face that he, while he had loving parents, didn't, he didn't have a like extended family. He was always kind of the outcast in that way, I guess. Right. Yeah. So you notice it, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't carry any particular meaning. It for makes you. me a little bit sad, I guess then. Yeah. I see it, I'm like, mm, fuck. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that, um, yeah, that moment, uh, that moment passes. Um, you can take inspiration if you don't have it uh, already. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then everybody uh, wakes up, or you, the last person, I guess, uh, wakes everyone up at the end of their watch uh, in the morning. Um, it's uh, it's overcast, it's kind of gray, uh, and everything is wet. Like you're, you wake up and your bedroll is just like soaked, and just from being like on the ground in uh, in the forest uh, and all the the mist kind of uh, getting all over everybody. So you wake up uncomfortable, um, but you know you weren't attacked in the night. There were no strange creatures. Um, I like when I don't get attacked in the night. That's yeah, always a good thing. It's, it's great. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, so you, you wake up and the, the tracks uh, lead out ahead of you. All right. All right. Continue after them. Yep. Janice in yeah. the lead. All right. Um, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to look to see if I want to change into anything as we're tracking. Okay. You can continue on, though. I'll let you know. Okay, sure. Right. So you uh, you carry on um, and uh, and head out, and I, I think that after just a few hours of following these tracks, uh, you come to uh, where the pathway that they've they've left off uh, meets with a, a proper road. Um, now, not like a paved stone road, but an area where the the trees have been cleared. Uh, they've done something. They've like churned the dirt or like mixed it with gravel so that the trees wouldn't grow as easily into it. And uh, this road runs basically through the through the forest, through the middle of the forest, out to the edge of the forest, and onward. And even from here, you can see um, the the smoke of uh, of several fires 
kind of like coming up into the uh, into the sky. And again, I don't mean like house fires, but probably like cooking fires, uh, signs of civilization. Um, and at the spot where this little path meets the meets the road, uh, you notice there is uh, some some intersection of some different tracks. Uh, there are what look like the the sort of three three toe and like back toe uh, footprints of birds, but they're like, you know, this big. Um, and they're, they're kind of around uh, this, this little spot where the, the road interconnects. And there's a, a little stone uh, shrine. Uh, it's maybe like two feet tall, made out of gray stone, like hand, handcrafted. And uh, it looks like a, um, like maybe a little hut or a little tree. And it's got some incense sticking up out of a little bowl of white sand. And there are the um, broken uh, husks of like nuts just kind of scattered all around it uh, amid these these little bird uh, footprints. And I, of course, have no idea what this is, right? Um, I don't think so. I don't think you recognize like there. It's some obviously some kind of shrine or or offering, but mm -hmm. it's it's hard to say. Um, yeah. Can I make a religion check to see if I. Can oh, definitely. Or? Yeah, yeah. Religion. No. You can make a religion check for sure. Okay. Oh, we're also. Oh, it's not just 11. Janice scouting to see this. Yeah, I mean, unless unless Janice wants to. Uh, to I would do say that they I ride. first encounter, but then I just move past it, and knowing that they'll see it and probably. Come yeah, well, it. I'm I'm definitely rolling nature. Okay, sure. Yeah, um, so I can tell you about the tracks with nature, and I can tell you about the uh, the little shrine. Um, okay. So, so Ramus, the shrine itself uh, appears to be a. Um, uh, like a uh, an offering a shrine. It's not a shrine to any of the arcana necessarily. Um, it's the kind of thing that you see in kind of backwater places that still hold on to like ancestor uh, uh, reverence. It's considered kind of a gauche practice because as we all know, when someone dies, their spirit is reborn in another body and they move along the, the, the wheel of, uh, of reincarnation. And so to revere a thing that's gone and moved on is sort of silly. Mm -hmm. uh, so it reminds you of one of those. Um, with an eleven, I don't think you can tell the the detail of uh, uh, of like who made it or what it might be for. Uh, but it's, it's definitely like offerings. Yeah, uh, how about an eight? Does that do any better than the eleven? No, it sure doesn't. <laughs> um, Berg, it looks like a shrine. Uh, you can smell. You can still smell like there's there's incense that hasn't finished burning. Uh, someone lit a stick of this within a few hours. They're, they're quite like long, but yeah, someone recently has passed by and, and lit a stick of incense and put it in here. In this um, world, in this world, Adam, were there very old religions and the Arcana religions came later and kind of replaced a lot of these? Yeah, so there were, there was like, and I, I think the Druids still adhere to some of these old practices. There was a general uh, like animism that existed in the world before where people revered the river that they, they lived near or they revered the mountains whose shadow covered their village. Uh, they revered the, the trees and the fields and they, they believed that everything had spirits. And with the formation of the courts, folks kind of moved on, attached this idea of, uh, of the, the wheel um, and, uh, and the fountain and all of that stuff came, uh, came later. Um, people don't really follow the, the spirit religions anymore, except, uh, Druids still, still acknowledge the sort of spirit of the land and that kind of stuff. Um, I think I and, lean down and, and look at the tracks. These are tiger tracks. Yeah. <laughs> tiger tracks. <laughs> yeah. With the three, <laughs> they're bird prints of some kind. They're Ram large bird yeah. Ram Ramus is just like, nope, those are bird. Ramus, I was just a fucking tiger. Don't you ever correct me again. <laughs> uh, actually, those are the prints of a jackass. Oh, wait, no, those are your footprints. Sorry. <laughs> I, I maybe just, like, pick up some dirt and just throw it at him. <laughs> <Be fair. laughs> Be awesome. Like, tiger. It's a tiger. Yeah. Yep. We should catch up. <laughs> Let's continue on. Okay. So as everybody continues onto the road, um, Berg, I think you notice, um, you notice a long, and by long, I mean, like, you know, like the length of your arm almost, um, like a long black feather. Um, it's big too, um, big black shiny feather um, that's just like lying by the side of the road. You notice it under a under a leaf. Berg walks up to it and just picks it up and shows it to the others like, look at this. Berg, what is that? Berg, what'd you, f put it down, Berg. <laughs> it's a feather. Yes, I look. Man. I look at Ramus, like, can put the fucking feather down right now. 
I don't know. There's sure something in the goddamn bush. <laughs> I'm keeping the feather. Berg, I would put that down and come back over here. Look, something shiny. And I cast light on a rock. No. <laughs> Berg, what if the rock starts like, to glow like mysteriously? <laughs> Berg just tucks the feather in, in his belt like, this is mine. <laughs> yeah, really. It's it's pretty. It's a nice it's long black nice. feather. This, he's never seen that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you you can put that on your put that on your your inventory. You have a long black feather. Yes, I do. Uh, and uh, yeah. And so you carry on down the uh, down the road. Um. So within, I mean, by the time midday comes, you you can definitely tell that like you've kind of the the tracks get harder to follow, but it's really obvious where they're headed, right? Because you've hit this road and it's only going in one uh, one direction from the path. Um. The uh, the road leads to uh, to a village. And based on what you know about the, um, the Shulin Valley, uh, this is the village of Peaceful Spring. It's the nearest village to, uh, to the caves that you were in before. Uh, and it's a, uh, it's a Court of Coins uh, village. Um, now, not like technically, right? Because it's not technically in the Court of Coins. This is a disputed territory. But the people, the settlers that live here are from the, the Court of Coins. Um, it's a small uh, village. It probably has you know, uh, 100 to 200 people at most. Uh, they're all kind of in family units and probably a, a temple uh, of some kind of small shrine or temple. Uh, and uh, it's almost certainly where the guards that you uh, murdered are from. So we all show up at this point? Or is this uh, just Janice? Yeah, I mean, Jan Janice, that's what you see. Okay. I wait for him then, yeah, before entering. I'm like at the, you know, end of the trail type of thing. Okay. Okay. We all show up. Janice fills us in. Says they're probably in here, right? Yeah, just passing on what pretty much what Adam just said. Yeah. Uh, do we see the cart laying about anywhere? Do we see a big enough? You're still you're still pretty far from the uh, uh, so pretty far from the um, the village itself. So you don't see it in around here. Okay. Um, I don't have like a. I mean, I could fucking. Adam, well, how, do people eat rats in this world? Um, I mean, it depends on where you are and, and the circumstances. Rats are edible, but I don't think people would just be like casually eating them in the way they would like a more traditional food animal. Rat hot dogs. What about a camel? People yeah. eating, they, they, you, the camel would be very out of place. You hit the nail on the head. People hey, fellas, what's up? Just <laughs> walking, in, <laughs> walking in town. Just walking in town. Camel, camel. Camel. Uh, Are there any common pets in this yeah, what, area? What, what about cats? Oh, I mean, yeah, like dogs and cats are everywhere humans are, for sure. Okay, so I... I... <laughs> Yeah, but what about camel? Adam? Yeah, what about that? I'm still on that camel. I'm still. I mean, you could turn into a camel if you wanted. So. <laughs> I, I turned to the group of. I think I'm going to turn into a camel and go scout. What do you guys think? Is that a good plan? I think they will draw a lot of attention to you. A what? A camel? Camel. Yeah. You never seen a camel? No. You cannot get into small places or climb very well. I think this could be a very bad animal to transform okay. into. Okay. What about a cat? A small, small little cat. That would be fantastic. I don't think anyone would pay too much attention to a cat. That'd be perfect. Berg, do you like cats? I do. Okay, Berg, <laughs> he's still the deal. We're going cat. Uh, Can I pet you? No, I don't like fucking touch him, me. Like, thumbing his little feather too. Yeah. <laughs> you ask if you can pet me, and I'm just like, don't fucking touch me, Berg. All right? I'm not a feather. You understand? <laughs> just like yes that is a feather uh and i guess i'll turn into a cat okay what is uh what does gideon's cat form look like what kind uh, of cat it's a you? calico cat small little calico cat mm -hmm. okay all right so you transform into this uh this little cat yeah and, and then, then I not. realized I did not tell them the plan, so I just walk off, wagging right. my butt. <laughs> yeah, Gideon turns into a cat and fucks off. Yeah. Uh, I'm going into the town. Like in the dirt with his uh, cat paw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As he kind Can of I do that? Off, I'm like, uh, I guess we were going to wait here. <laughs> yeah. Track. So let's just make a camp here. 
<laughs> Tucks it back in. So just make camp off the trail, I guess, and try to hide ourselves. Okay. Let me ask you yeah. something, Adam. How yeah. tough is the edge of this, you know, because a, a bird feather usually has kind of like a point at the end of it. Mm-hmm. How tough is this one, considering it's a pretty big... Yeah, like the there's a name for the the thing that runs through the the middle of a yeah, the, the, and it's like it's it's big. It's like you know, I would think it's pretty, pretty dime sturdy. sized around. It's pretty sturdy. Yeah, like maybe it could be an improvised weapon. If I wanted to impale. Uh, I mean, you could use it once probably, and it would break if you tried to use it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, not it's not like a dagger. You could do like everyone laughs at Berg when he picks up the feather. <laughs> if you stab somebody with this, it'll do. It would deal like one d two damage. <laughs> Plus, plus your strength oh. bonus, and then it would break. Wow. Would it give them the tickle debuff? Yeah, you could tickle someone with the other end of it, I guess. Yeah. That's, they'd have to not be wearing armor for that. I like the situation where he pulls out his sidearm, his feather out of his belt. He's like, Huzzah! <laughs> yeah, some guy's just like, you are a complete uh, idiot. You. <laughs> yeah. Prevent uncontrollable tickling laughter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm going so, uh, into town to investigate. Yeah, the three of you. I see. We see the three of you kind of like move off the road, and then the the shot sort of fades, and we fade in on the town itself, and sort of the the bustle of uh, of a town at midday. Uh, we see peasants uh, dressed in in court of coins, uh, like sort of peasant outfits, um, and they, you know they're waving to each other, and we kind of get this pastoral shot of all this stuff happening. And we see, yeah, this this cat come like strolling down yeah, the street. I look like Thomas O'Malley from Aristocats. <laughs> I've never seen that. That's and um, alley, the alley cat. Yep. And we see a uh, yeah. I think we see like a, a an, an old woman like kneel down and like go to like scratch you behind the ears as you come like wandering by. Um, are you looking for anything in particular, or you want to kind of like wander around and take a look at? Uh, uh, I'm looking for the wagon specifically. Okay. Because sure. my understanding, and I think the group's understanding, is that the wagon rolled into here. Uh, and so that's kind of, and also, I guess I'm looking for soldiers, uh, of the court. If I see anyone with the insignias of the court on, I'll, I'll make note of that as well. Okay. Sure. So you're like walking through, uh, walking through town, looking around, uh, the, uh, the town. Yeah. It's a small, uh, forest village. So, uh, I think that they, they predominantly operate off of, um, like logging and, and like woodwork. So you can smell this scent of, uh, of cut wood uh, everywhere in the town, uh, obviously increased by your your cat senses uh-huh. um so you we walk by and we see someone like uh, cutting planks from a, a log uh there's there's uh various like wood craft going on in the uh, in the village and um the central building in the uh, in the village is this uh this wooden sort of tiered pagoda looking temple um it's all carved out of the the wood of the local forest and it's painted a um a sort of gold and green color uh, and uh, there are people kind of gathered around. There's a well outside who they're gathering water from, and uh, and talking. And yeah, I think you see a few uh, a few sort of sh- uh, soldiers around, but they're um, they don't look like they have much to do. You you know you spot two of them talking by the well. Uh, you see another one uh, maybe talking with a, a a woman outside of a a, a little like uh, tea house. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they don't seem to be on guard or like, you know, worried about anything. And as we, as we follow you, uh, through, uh, through the town, um, we find our way to a, uh, the outside of a, a shop, um, some kind of, uh, store it's, it's closed right now. Um, but it looks like if you, if you look up at it, we see a, a sign hanging outside with a, uh, a chisel and a hammer crossed on it. So it probably sells woodworking tools. Uh-huh. Um, hear maybe um, the sounds of a bellow or a forge uh, out back. But the reason you stop here is because there is a wagon, an empty wagon parked outside and you can smell and we can see uh, blood. There's like these, these blood stains kind of on the inside of it. Um, not like macabre kind of blood splattered everywhere, but like some blood leaked out of the bodies uh, as they were uh, transported to this, uh, to this shop. Sure. Um, okay. And how, how long of distance wise do I imagine this to have be in the town like from the entrance where you came yeah from where i came um i mean it's pretty central uh, in the town so okay. you know uh t- sort of 20 minutes from the out- outside edge of the uh, of the town itself okay uh and do i see much of a guard presence is there any sort of uh, armed people about yeah, so you're you're looking around for for guards, and I think that's when uh, that's when we hear a, a deep, like a low growl, 
uh, and the the camera pans over and we see this this dog, this kind of not like a <laughs> big hound or anything, but kind of like a hungry looking like mangy dog. And he's just like got his hackles up. He's like, like growling at you um, a, a few uh, a few feet away. Do I get any bonus to making a noise? Or am I one hundred percent this creature? Like I can't emit a, a noise. This no, creature. you're one hundred percent. You are a cat physically. Okay. Everybody has to turn back just because the fucking dog. Yeah. <laughs> dog is like growling at you. Well, yeah. I'm faster than this dog. I would imagine. Yeah. Dogs can't climb. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Some of them can. I want to. The goal now is to get up on top of something. And run the fuck out of town with this dog chasing right. me. Right. So the, the dog, yeah, the dog starts barking and like rushes towards you. Um, so you want to try to like run and like climb up a, a yes up a wall or something. Okay. Yes. Right. Well, let's let me let me look up a dog's initiative. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Tell me the initiative of dogs. Let's see. Uh, take a look here. Um, <laughs> And you're gonna need your initiative for for your cat form, right? I am. Yeah, I, okay. I can find that for you real quick. Okay. All right. You, you look that up. Uh, As a cat, you have two hit points, um, so that's good. Yeah, but I turn into a human if I if I read that's that. That's true. You love. Yeah, that'll be very surprising. Oh God, if you type <laughs> "cat five e" into Google, it tells you all about cat five cables. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> cat five. Turn into a cat five cable. Yeah. Uh, so, what do you want? My initiative is it's usually dex, right? It's just your dex bonus. Yeah, so. it's plus two. You know, if you did that, then any dog on any point in the internet could potentially. <laughs> <laughs> right. If that's that dog true. bites you from anywhere, you're actually all right. The other dogs. You're actually right. Believe it or not, one hundred percent. All right. So this this dog has a uh, plus two to its uh, its initiative. So we both have fifteen dex. Or does it have fourteen uh, decks? It's fourteen. Fucking dogs. Right. So let's let's go ahead and roll roll a d twenty plus two. And we'll see if the dog can try to bite you. You roll before. first. I want to know what I have to beat. Okay, so I got a you twenty. Fuck Jesus, it. you fucked. Wow. So you need oh, damn. Oh. <laughs> so the the dog like makes a move, and I'm already up the fucking. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So the dog, yeah, the dog barks and like lunges for you, and you're already pew, shot up the side of a, a, a fence <laughs> post, and now you're you're up on top of the, the little woodworker, the tool shop, and the dog is just like up on both paws on the wall, just barking loudly at you, and uh, that's when the door uh, the door opens, and uh, we see a, a soldier, a court of coins uh, guard, uh, come out. He's not wearing his helmet. He's still got his like his armor on. But he's not carrying any weapons, uh, and he comes out and he looks at the dog. He's like, "Shut up!" And the dog like looks up at you and barks and he looks up and he sees you uh he sees this cat up on the roof and turns back to the dog he's like, stupid thing and he, like goes to kick the dog and the dog like runs off uh a little ways and he, he shakes his head yeah i pull a uh, simba and just start growling at the top of my lungs over the top <laughs> over the town again. yeah yeah and the um yeah the, the the guard you hear a voice from inside you hear a woman's voice say what's going on and he turns and looks over his shoulder and, uh, and he says, nothing, just some cat. And uh, he turns around and, uh, and goes back inside. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll stealth my way on the top of the building. You said I'm on yeah. the Smith building, right? Yeah, the dog, uh, the dog s- stops barking but looks up at you like it's swearing an oath of vengeance for having <laughs> embarrassed it. Like you just get like dog death eyes. Like it's going it, to... Sure. Remember. Yeah, I I want to stealth out of the town as a cat. Okay. Sure. Um, let me. Uh, do I get a bonus to stealth? I get keen smell, which is advantage on wisdom perception checks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my stealth is plus four, so I'm rolling at a plus d twenty plus four for stealth. Yes. Nice. Fifteen. Not bad. Okay. Sure. And my uh, speed yeah, is forty. Uh, climb is thirty. So. I think if anyone if anyone does notice you, um, they'd have to be. Very, very perceptive for an average peasant, um, but also like no one cares. It's a cat, so even if someone sees you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then I just I return to the group. Okay. Cool. Uh, so yeah, that's fine. That doesn't take you. Uh, I mean, you're cats. So you don't. You can travel quickly, like hopping from roof to roof, and so you get out of the town, no problem. Uh, and then yeah, you know, run back along the road to the group. I think the whole thing takes like an hour, maybe. Okay. When uh, when I know that the group can see me. I, I walk regal as fuck. 
All right. That, that <laughs> ass is, is swaying. <laughs> yeah, tail up. Across with tail up across the road. Yeah, my head's very <laughs> hot, held high. Uh, and then I turn, I, I change back into a, a human in front of them. Uh, okay. So they found the wagon. There's a brutal dog, though. You got to take care of that dog. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, what does that feel like to just turn into a cat? Imagine if every bone in your body for a split second shattered and then reformed into a new creature. It's pretty intense. I don't that recommend terrible. it. It sounds it it sounds terrible. It is terrible. Mm. But it's worth it. It's yeah. nice. So do you do you ever do you ever retain the characteristics of the of the animal like after you shape shift? Like do you have to if like it, if it's a, if I'm like, doing it in you're a rush. This conversation, are you like licking the back of your hand or like? <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe so. If it's also like a quick or a rush rough transformation, sometimes if I'm in in stride or something like that, mm-hmm. uh, I'll have like whiskers left or something like that that I need to to fully <laughs> get done or get away with. Right. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I inform the group like. Found the wagon. It's at the blacksmith. There's also a soldier. He's from the court. I imagine there's more inside. Um, Janice, uh, you're probably the best to, to make this decision, but I think we go in the middle of the night, not in the middle of the day. Yeah, especially since we just need the fucking thing. We don't need, we don't fight. need a fight. You're right. Yeah, mm-hmm. we just need the bracelet. Um, did he tell us how to get the bracelet off the dead body? Is it still magical adam do we know you don't know i don't think we asked that question because we're idiots so you don't know how to get the bracelet off do you know how to get your bracelets off bird draws his sword and goes (laughs) i think bird actually had i'm dumb (laughs) (laughs) I, i look back well berg just said he's gonna carry the person's hand so fantastic (laughs) <laughs> I imagine that it stops I mean it's meant to just never be removed and I've experienced what it can do if it's coming off of someone dead then I don't think there'll be a problem alright we go at night everyone that work for everyone sure yes sounds fine to me fantastic easy afternoon Okay. just kind of like walk into the forest yeah, sure. Okay. So uh, over the course of the rest of the day, uh, I think maybe uh, you you spot um, like some horses uh, come through. Uh, there's uh, there's two of them, um, and they're they're lashed to uh, a cart basically with uh, a bunch of logs on it um, from the from the forest. So there's a wood uh, a woodcutter uh, that is uh, leading his his horses back to bring these logs into town. But otherwise, uh, no no traffic on the road. Um, as, uh, as night falls, uh, you, you can see that they light up, um, some lights up outside the road to keep the, the road in lit. Um, there's a, a little guard tower kind of thing there, um, with a, a guard positioned on it, kind of keeping an eye out, uh, for approaching travelers. There's no walls around this village. Uh, there's just the village kind of peters out into, uh, into the woods, uh, around it. Um, and, uh, yeah. And so that's uh, that's what you notice as as night falls. Okay, Janice, you want to lead this attack or sneaking mission? Yeah. I think I Do should. you even? I, I I maybe I stop myself and like put my hand in front of Ramus. Do you even need us there for this? I mean, he's loud as shit, and I, I point to and like tug on his armor. This guy will bump into something. I point to to Berg. And I can turn into something and help, but, mm-hmm. you know, if a fight happens. Why don't I go ahead and you guys just plan on you leading them to a nearby area and only enters, you know, helping if, if something goes awry. Okay. Um, I just worry if something goes wrong and we're too far away from you. Well, that's what I'm saying. Be like across yeah. the street. Just have a, you know, yeah. just be hanging out. We will go super slow and far behind you. Just Adam, can we also do some some backtracking in time uh, while we're, we're waiting for night to fall? I think you're having this conversation, yeah, just in the woods at any time. Okay. Can can I make a roll to have some sort of outline of the places that I visited in the town so I know where to send Janice? Or where he has a general idea of where to go? 
Definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can be drawing out a map and kind of showing. Okay. Do I need a roll for the effectiveness of that or anything? No, I don't think so. Okay, great. Right. So yeah, you it's know where cool. to go generally, Janice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, now, and do you I, describe I, it? Do you describe it in purely like human terms, or are you like turn left at the house that smells like fish? Like, I think I think I start to do that, and then Janice is like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, right. Yes, you don't have my keen." Uh, he knows. Uh, yeah, it Bob, 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 the house that looks like this. And you're gonna find the house that looks like that. Make sure you turn left, etc. It's in the center of town. We'll be over here, and I point towards uh, something that's on the closest to us edge of town, to where we can still kind of see the blacksmith in the center. But uh, we're still on the outskirts. We can be on next to a building, just kind of hanging out. So, do you want? Do you want to approach? Like, because uh, the closer you get to the town, the more likely it is that the guard posted in the little like guard tower will see you. Um, so, well, I think how we're far away from that pool of light do you want to be when night falls? How close does Janice have to get? Super close to that? Uh, yeah, or Janice can go around the 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 post. Like, their their guards kind of keeping an eye on the outside, but they're they're not really like it's not a military fort or anything. Janice is real good at. Uh, at this this is his, his thing i think um, we'll have to slip by but i think we're on we're on the outskirts of town but still close enough to be able to hear janice if he makes a a call or a you know maybe i teach him throughout the day or maybe he knows some sort of bird call that i would recognize or that we would recognize as a group that that is a sign of trouble we've established a bird call yeah mm -hmm. it sounds vaguely like squirrel squirrel like <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah yeah, and so we're on the outside. We we try to stay away from the guard post as the group of three, and let Janice do all the the sneaking. Okay, cool. So with this 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 bird call in mind, uh, you can you can start to to sneak. You rock, remember, you hear yeah, that? Yeah, it's a country bird with a musical call. I am uh, attempting to not be seen by anyone. I'm gonna try to super stealth it. Okay, yeah. Let's uh, let's have you make a stealth roll. Do you have advantage? Oh, 18. done. Don't need Good one. Okay. Uh, roll a thing for the guard. I did it. I rolled a die. Okay. Uh, all right. So, what? Talk about your your approach vector here, Janice. What? Uh, what are you doing? You're gonna come in from the side. You're gonna try to sneak under the tower and go in the main, uh, the sort of front road. Yeah, I think he's like uh, has been kind of sizing up the the encampment. And like you said, it's not a fortress, so he didn't spend all day on this kind of thing but he noticed the tower he kind of maybe peruse a little bit of the wall or something like that just felt like he could probably especially with low traffic at, at night time uh just go right past the guard in in the tower in terms of like uh maybe like throwing a rock over here just to get him to look over there and then hugging the wall and going in that kind of way okay cool. something along those lines yeah so i think that you were you're able to uh to make your way uh into the town you're moving sort of from building to building uh staying out of the the kind of main area of uh of town headed towards this this tool maker's shop back alleys that kind of thing if he needs to yeah. get up on a roof yeah totally um i think that the the village's uh buildings are almost all aside from the pagoda and the tea house they're all one story the tea house and the pagoda are the only two story or three story buildings the pagoda is like four stories but not that big okay. around the bottom um and there's not really any alleys because the buildings aren't close enough together, but you can quickly like run from one building to there and sort of try to stay out of sight. The village mostly goes to sleep when it gets dark. Uh, the tea house and the temple are open all the time. And I think you can hear um, the sound of monks in the temple uh, praying. Um, there's a very specific uh, kind of like prayer chant that some uh, Court of Coins monks kind of maintain all the time. That's a, a religious practice they do as a symbol of the eternal uh, cycle of reincarnation. So they take turns in uh, speaking this uh, this chant. Uh, so you can hear that. And then also there's the sort of cricket sounds from the, from the village. It's quite quiet. We don't hear anything from you because you're stealthy as hell. Um, and you get within kind of eye shot of the uh, of the, the toolmaker's shop. You're near the, the tea house. And you overhear a conversation. Um, you hear a man's voice uh, say, and they're outside. Uh, you can, if you peer around the corner, you can see them, but you hear them first. Your man's voice say, um, uh, Madam, you don't need to pay me. I will move on my way as soon as I'm done here. And then there's a pause and she's like, yes, that's what I'm paying you for. I want you to leave now. And he, uh, he says, but 
my job's not done. And she says, I know what you are and I want you to leave. And he laughs and uh, he says, um, I'll move on when the time is right. And uh, you hear like coins clinking and then uh, the, the sound of the, the kind of door to the tea house open. Um, and, uh, and then you just hear, uh, I guess from here you could still hear it, uh, the sound of um, like flint and steel like clicking. Uh, then someone takes a deep breath and there's a long sigh. Uh, and then you hear um, like a shuffling sound. Uh, you can peer out around the corner if you want to see. Yeah, I definitely would do that. Okay, cool. Okay, so there's a uh, there's a guy uh, leaned up against the side of the tea house, um, and he's smoking a pipe. Um, he's got this long pipe, uh, and it's clenched in his teeth right now. And he's he's flipping a deck of cards uh, in his hands, um, and he's got a uh, he's got a one of these wide. Um, those triangular, like pointy, like straw hats, um, but it's off. He's he's got it sitting uh, by his feet, and there's a big gourd uh, next to it with a, a cork in the top. Uh, and he's wearing um, uh, like just like traveler's clothes, like dark traveler's clothes, uh, with like a sash across it. And you can see from here, in the light of his um, uh, light of his pipe, uh, his his hands uh, and his arms and like part of his neck uh, are covered in these kind of faded, uh, intricate blue tattoos. Mm. Uh, he's got a um, He's got a, a beard and kind of like short hair. It looks like he's cut it recently. And I don't recognize any signs of this meaning anything to me or anything? You don't recognize the tattoos. They're strange. Like your, your eyes kind of linger on them a moment. Um, but yeah, you, you, don't, you don't recognize this guy. Um, he's definitely, the, the cards that he's shuffling are like fortune teller's cards. But also the accent that I heard, if I'm assuming it's him, does that put him in a region I know or anything? Yeah, somewhere, somewhere in the Court of Wands. Um, he's definitely foreign to this, uh, this, this region. Okay. So court of wands, I think to myself, which means magic of some sort, but other than that, not much, not much to say. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's a foreigner. He's definitely, he definitely stands out. Okay. This is the tea house you said, right? Which is not where the body was. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think I, you know, go back into, into hiding and just kind of document the conversation, but then make my way towards the, the house or the where the body is. Yeah. So you, you kind of go around the, around the tea house. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah. And I think there's a period where you have to kind of like dash like across the open um, to get to the, the next kind of batch of, uh, of shadow. Um, and, and as you do uh, you hear, you hear the guy, uh, you hear the guy just whistle. Like he, he whistles to kind of get your attention. Um, I, I can't do the whistle, but he makes like a noise uh, and and is looking right over like at you as you uh, as you make it. Around He's there. looking right at me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, he's by himself at this point, though, right? Like the woman yep. he's speaking with is in. Yeah, the and he, he doesn't. He you don't see any weapon on him or anything. I think I would, um, from my position where I perhaps would be on some level of hidden, but seeing them staring right at me and trying to grab my attention. A little bit of like the jig is up with me and not knowing who he is but being intrigued by his conversation but also by how astute he was i guess i would just kind of come a little bit to the light and and like nod over here type of thing yeah he um he takes a, a long long drag of the of his pipe and the the embers f flare up and you can see his face uh, clearly the light kind of reflects in his eyes and he he exhales and then turns the pipe over and like taps the ash out onto the onto the ground so he's walking over to you and he's kind of like cleaning out the uh, not the pipe uh, as he walks over i would he's say he's gored over by the by the wall okay my second layer of of you know my backup plan is not like to tense up and draw my sword or anything like that i'm acting like a Maybe I'm just some fucking weirdo that likes running around in the shadows or something like that. So I'm just kind of, totally. I'm waiting for him, just standing there. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And I think, I think that's a good, that's a good place to, to take our break as he, as he's approaching you with this kind of curious look on his face uh, and you're, you're standing in the shadows of this building and then we can, yeah, we'll fade out to break. Sounds good. All right. So I got two hours left to go. We'll see if Jeff uh, decides to fight this guy. I hope you don't, Jeff. I really hope <laughs> we've seen this guy before. But we didn't. We don't want to tell you no, anything. We, uh, I have no idea who you're talking about. Yeah, me and me and <laughs> no, none of us have seen this guy before. Let's give him this little bit. A bit, uh, guys. I'm gonna dick punch him. I'm gonna roll for that right now. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> That'll go well. That'll go well. Uh, let's take our break, like Adam just said, and we'll come back and go to that third hour. So, see you guys in just a bit for more role play Court of Swords. We'll see you then. <laughs> 